Ja, mein Name ist dann Silva Sendiongo, aber es ist ein bisschen I'm sorry, I have to give the talk in English. My uh, Japanese is not good enough. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot for the introductions. So, uh, my name is Kai Kunze. I work at Geo Media Design. And my uh, topic was actually eyewear for gaming. And I quickly will go over motivation, why I care about this topic, and then talk a little bit about the hardware we use and then go into first subtle interactions, more natural interactions for gaming, and then also into implicit interactions. And I'll show you a little bit about the future work. So what was the motivation for this project? Um, if you look into, you know, kind of smartphones help us a lot every day. However, if you look how we interact with our smartphones and also how people play with our smartphones, there's big issues because you know, if you're looking down, you might get uh, problems with headaches, with back neck. And then, you know, if you think about the future of mobile gaming, you know, is it VR, AR that we really wear these uh, heavy devices and are isolated with people? There are some research that looks into mobile interactions, also mobile interactions with displays. However, they usually require the whole body. So you use something like a Kinect or a different depth sensor and then do interactions. And then the question is, you know, if you're really going out shopping and you're carrying bags or you know, you're in the subway, is it the right way to interact? Is it the right way to bring gaming in, in public spaces? And I think you know, kind of there is room for gaming in public spaces. However, we have to think about new ways of interacting uh, with uh, game content in mobile spaces. And I believe uh, I, or the I is an interesting way to interact with um, games in general. You can get a lot of information, and kind of cognitive information and so on from the I, and you can also use it for interactions. However, there's a, a, a distinct problem if you want to use you know, I or I based interactions in mobile gaming because so far you know, this is the setup you would have to use, so mobile eye tracking. That's not something you would want to wear throughout the day to you know, interact with something. You know, maybe in future, maybe in three or four or five years we will see with smaller cameras, with a better battery life, that this can be really integrated into glasses. However, uh, then what kind of hardware should we use? And here I'm happy that I can uh, collaborate with uh, uh, Jin, so Yuji Uema, who's also here uh, from Jin, on a meme. Meme are you know, more, I would say, socially acceptable looking glasses. And they have some motion sensors inside that can be also used for interactions with games, and we also use them. Uh, however, the most interesting part are the three points around the nose pads. You can also later on try them out. They are electrodes, and they measure your eye movement. It's not like an eye tracker, so you won't get the position in space where somebody is looking at, but you get uh, relative eye movement. So left, right, up, down. Uh, and how this works is you have the three dots, the three electrodes around your eyes, and your eye is actually a depot. It has a positive charge in front, a negative in back. So then if you move you, you know, if you put two electrodes here and here, and you move your eyes up and down, you would detect up and down movement, and here and here, left and right. And in this case we use these two for the left and right movement, and these two for the up and down movement. So what you can do with it, and this is kind of how we started with also the project, is you can actually detect uh, eye blink as well as left and right eye movement. And uh, already this can be used for, you know, kind of very, very, uh, yeah, kind of, I would say, subtle game interactions, very kind of uh, 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 not so good game interactions. So in this case, Shoya uses his eye blink to control the flapping of the bird. It's one of the hardest games you can play. So you also see in his face, he's very concentrated because every time you close your eyes, you don't see where the bird is. So this, I won't recommend this. But this is kind of how we started with uh, the idea. 
And then we wondered, what can we do, especially if you want to interact with public displays? Uh, how can we uh, set up a way where we can use relative eye movement? And here this idea of orbits started. So what we're doing is we're showing circles going on the screen or something moving on the screen, and then we correlate the movement on the screen with your eye movement. And then we can detect, so in this case there are just uh, two circles, we can actually detect up to eight circles on the screen with the current setup, but we can detect based on just the EOG, so this is the EOG signal, on which of the two dots you are looking at. So in this case we're using correlation and the dots are out of phase, so then you can di distinguish left or right and, and uh, so far up to eight uh, different targets on screen. So the idea here is, you know, you have maybe your bags or something in your hand, you want to interact with a public display, you want to play a game while you wait in the subway, and you can just look at the screen, the uh, glasses detect that you're looking at a specific dot at the screen, and you can actually then do an interaction. So this is an early example of a physical prototype. Oops. So here you see a small uh, kind of dot going around and then just, you know, kind of we try it out with just one trigger. Uh, in this case, yeah, Junichi sits down, he wears the glasses and as soon as, oh, it's a little bit dark, but uh, as soon as he looks into the dot, you'll see a continuous line. So this is the idea. So every time he follows the dot, uh, he's just looking at it, nothing happens, but as soon as he follows the dot, we use the correlation and you see the line closing. So in this case, with this, we could already make a first uh, very, very simple game. Uh, this is the game setup, so this was used on a public display. Uh, so you have here uh, the circles with out of phase. This is for two to up to four players. And if you're kind of following one of the dots, this um, game character is actually moving either left or right and can then eat uh, some points to, uh, to increase the point score. So the interesting part here is you can move also the enemy Figure. So if you want to mess with uh, your other, uh, with the other uh, figure, that's also possible. And it gives a kind of interesting game mechanic as well. In this case, we just tried, is it possible to play this? Uh, we showcased this at KMD Forum as well as uh, ICMI and Ubicom. And this is just a small uh, video that shows you the interactions for the game. So. So these are the three electrodes around the nose, and in this case, so depending on where you look at, so the uh, person looks at the dot left, uh, then you can kind of move the character either left or right on the screen. Yeah, so here you see the action, so you collect kind of points on this side, and depending on, on which dot you're looking at, the game character is moving either left or right. So that's kind of a few uh, first very basic interaction. There's one of the, the one issue with uh, uh, this uh, setup that you know kind of it might not be fast enough. Uh, so we are also looking into other interactions that maybe also require you know hand interaction or so on. This is now work we just presented at at Ubicom with discrete interactions. So what you can use here is actually you can also use the subtle nose interactions. They can be also recognized by the electrodes. <coughs> so uh, this is then more discrete. You can use the eye rays for uh, the orbit interactions and these then for a specific targets like shooting or other things. So here you see right flick, left flick recognized, right flick, right push, and uh, also left push, so, uh, and rubbing. And then a couple of uh, uh, application cases, so for uh, rejecting a phone call or uh, reading your mail 
also some some uh, gaming interactions and similar. So uh, this is then more on the level of discrete interactions. We also try what is also possible is you can use your nose as a joystick. However, also these interactions they are not so good for long term game playing as you can guess because. Uh, if you're uh, touching your nose all the time, that's not acceptable. However, what was fascinating for us is um, Zhu Yong, the uh, uh, presenter of the work uh, we're working with, uh, uh, one of my students, uh, he was using uh, the nose to control his slideshow during the presentation, and actually just two or three people in the audience noticed that he used it. So it might be still acceptable for a couple of very subtle game interactions. However, so this is then more on the discrete side, so we're trying to find more uh, implicit, more natural interactions to use for gaming, so it's acceptable to do this also in public space. I think we are not there yet, but you know, kind of we are on the way. However, we are also wondering a little bit about implicit interactions. What you saw before is we can use um, the eye blink, so we can detect eye blink, and we can also detect pattern. So in this case, then, what we did is we tried to get if you're concentrated or not concentrated from this data, and that's still something that's ongoing, so we have a first very, very simple model. In this case, we assume that if you're concentrated, usually your eye blink should be lower, <coughs> and also your head movement should be lower. So what we did then is we built a small game based on that. Uh, we're using haptic feedback, that's uh, uh, eight haptic actuators. It gives you uh, kind of ring uh, haptic feedback. And uh, in cases that the user is not concentrated, so is not meditating, uh, we give them a stronger feedback and try to get, get them the rhythm of the breathing. And if they are more and more concentrated, we remove that feedback. That's also something right now we're trying, it's in the early stages. Um, and then in the next stage, so this was a showcase at SIGGRAPH and, and UBICOM also this year. And in the next stage, what we recognize is actually also over the eyewear, it seems to be possible to get breathing. So we can then use also breathing as an implicit feedback for mobile gaming in situ. In this case, uh, we have as a ground truth uh, a breast strap that gives the in and out breathing. And what is interesting in this case also is that uh, we let people to do, to do a simple mindfulness, a guided meditation, and uh, we ask them to press a button when they're not uh, concentrating on the mindfulness meditation. So when they are. Um, more or less, uh, you know, when their mind drifts away. And that's easily recognizable with this crust strip. So every time the breathing gets shallower, they are actually not concentrating on the meditation. Uh, so the question now is, can we also detect that with uh, the eyewear? And we're working on that right now. So yeah, that brings me actually already to the end of the presentation. I think I'm a bit too fast. Thanks a lot for uh, the time. So also, right now, uh, we will re release the source code open source, so you can use this in uh, your you know, kind of own uh, games. There are a couple of uh, publications, and uh, the same approach actually also works with uh, other eye-tracking software. So the algorithms also on be using, uh, Jin's meme is actually way worse than you know kind of any optical eye tracking you could use on a public display or other things. So uh, in this case you can just use at least the orbits, the uh, orbit interactions easy even without calibrating it for users because you just need to get the uh, correlation of the eye movement to the on-screen uh, content. There's some work from Andreas Bulli from a colleague of mine that also does this. So yeah, that brings me to an end. Thanks a lot for the attention.